He's very funny, very witty. Please make some noise for Joe Nay. Wow, what a terrific crowd. Let me tell you from the bottom of my heart, of all the audiences I performed for, you guys are definitely the ones that showed up here tonight. So, thank you, thank you. I was talking earlier with Lino. Um, he was telling me about that drink special he had. It sounded pretty good. Had to be better than at the last place I was at. They advertised Freaky Fridays, where all glasses will be served in a clean drink. Um, Ed, you, uh, you mentioned to me that you're a um, software developer. Yeah. I did that right out of school. I had a really great job as a, as a software engineer. Then I got a job pushing papers on a desk. And now I'm trying to be a comic. It seems like I'm on the Benjamin Button career path. If you guys don't laugh at me tonight, I'll be getting a paper route. And then eventually I'll hit rock bottom and become an open mic host. I had my personal identity stolen. I haven't reported it yet though. My credit was so bad, the thief is actually improving it. I found out about it when Visa's Fraud Protection Unit called me to report some abnormal activity on my account. I asked what sort of activity. They said, well, the person you're using your card now seems to be doing something with his life. I was born in Battle Creek, Michigan. Some of you may know that as the cereal capital of the world because it's home to both Kellogg's and Post cereals. Our high school mascot was a flake. We could never count on him. In high school, I was on the football team and on the chess team. The hardest part about being both a jock and a nerd at the same time was having to give myself wedgies. My family was questioning why I would want to get into comedy at such an advanced age. All my pop culture references are from the 1970s. The, the audiences won't get me. Okay, I understand that, but I, I'm doing this for you. I, I want you to want me. I need you to need me. I'm begging you to beg me. Sorry guys, that was a cheap trick. I gotta stop right here. Uh, this has been bothering me the whole time I've been up here. Ma'am, I was trying to figure out who you remind me of, and I just figured it out. There's a TV show called America's Top Models. You remind me of the type of person that would watch that show. <laughs> yeah. I was at a cocktail party the other day. A woman I didn't even know came over to me and started rubbing my big belly. She asked if it worked like a Buddha statue where she could ask a witch. I told her I would be much more likely to grant her wish if she rubbed lower because my feet were really hurting me that day. Now for all you single ladies in the audience who are thinking something other than feet, shame on you for not giving me your phone number yet. I became a vegan this year, which means I've done away with just about everything except bragging about it. I think the hardest part about being a vegan is coming up with the substitutions. For example, instead of mayonnaise, I use avocado spread. Instead of butter, I use vegetable oil. Instead of chicken, I use marshmallow peeps. <laughs> Which is weird because marshmallow peeps look like chicken, but they're one of the few foods that don't taste like chicken. Hmm. In order to prepare for today, I was collaborating with a more experienced comic, Paul Jameis, back there. But then I started to worry that our material might sound a little bit too similar. He said, don't worry about it. Our styles are very different. He said his style is to tell one-liners, whereas mine is not funny. Since you're at a comedy show, there's a very good chance that you also watched Last Comic Standing on TV. And if you did, you saw in the last episode, Norm MacDonald tell one of the contestants, that it takes 30 years to become a good comic. I started this year at 55. 
So by the time I'm 85, I will be killing it at the 4 p.m. dinner show at the Shady Pines Retirement Home. And I'll be able to do the same set every night because half of the audience will forget what I did the night before and the other night will be turnover. And I won't have to learn to do sound effects on the microphone. I'll just, at that point, be able to point the mic to various body parts. At that age bracket, last comic standing takes on a very literal meaning. I went to the bank today. I told them I wanted to pay a bill from my account using an electronic funds transfer. They said, I'm sorry, Mr. Nay, you can't do an EFT because your account has nothing L-E-F-T, which I wouldn't have minded so much, except when he emphasized the L, he did this which was pretty ballsy of him because obviously I'm gangsta. And I could have interpreted that as flashing a gang sign. And then I would have to throw down on him to protect my street cred. And by street, I mean Wall Street. I've only used a dating service one time in my life. I told him I was expecting to find a woman that was successful and humorous, attractive and liked sports. So I wrote up my bio and I handed it to them and asked them if I needed to change anything. They said, yes, your expectations. <laughs> my cousin Sally from Ohio moved down to Florida. She's working in Miami Beach at one of those really tacky gift shops. So she, Sally does sell seashells by the seashore. She's looking for a new job though. She likes what she does, she just doesn't like telling people what she does because she has a list. So I'm trying to get her a job with my friend Pete, but I don't think that's gonna work very well because Peter works at Publix packing pickled peppers. I got sick and had to go into the hospital at a point in time in my life where I had no health insurance. But I paid my bill in full and then found out only 5% of uninsured patients pay their bill. Same with a student loan. I paid mine off and now I'm hearing about all these forgiveness programs. So on this last loan I took out, when it came time to pay it back, I said, you know what? No more Mr. Responsibility. I want my free slice of the pie. I'm not paying you back. So screw you, mom. But then after I told her that, I felt really, really bad because she broke my kneecaps. I recently became a member of the Mile High Club, accidentally. Because I'm so large and the airplane lavatories are so small, when we hit some turbulence, I became intimate with a soap dispenser. I call her Bubbles. She doesn't have much personality, but on the plus side, she is self-lubricating. So I guess that's a wash, literally. Because of that incident, Virgin Airlines will now have to change their name. Thank you very much.